Hello, I'm Magic Mike Live enthusiast Trevor Ashley, and welcome to Drag Hag. Seriously, I've seen that chat three times. Today on our episode, we will recap RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under Episode 3. It was the Girl Group Challenge. Plus, I'll interview the Eliminated Queen, and my celebrity drag hag today is the fabulous Gretel Colleen. You're a drag hag, drag hag, you're a drag hag, a bona fide first class, a drag hag. We are here with the fabulous broadcaster, author of her new book. My Daughter's Wedding. My Daughter's Wedding. It's amazing. Ex-Big Brother <laughs> host and comedian writer extraordinaire, yes. Gretel Colleen. Hello, Imelda. <laughs> What's going on here? I know, it's very Imelda Marcos, isn't it? Could you, you could eat that dress. I, I quite love it, though, because it looks like it should be... It's very... Um, my dress is very... I like these shoulders. They're very 80s. It is only shoulders. It is. It's just shoulders. I never wore a dress like that in the 80s. Didn't you? No, I was... You missed out. Oh, well, who knew they were coming back? <laughs> well, I don't think they are, sleeve darling. Sleeve by I think sleeve. This, this is why I'm, a, you know, I've got my sort of short hair. I like it. I think it's a good look. Um, my darling. Yes, so, well, so long as you're happy. I'm happy. We're the ones who've got to look at it. <laughs> yes, go on. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it is so fabulous to have you as our celebrity drag hag Thank today. You. It's an honour. It's so fabulous. Now, darling, how do you remember your first drag queen, who you saw? Yes, um, because I moved to Darlinghurst when I would, had, was just before I turned 18 to Taylor Square, and so the Aubrey was still <gasps> happening. How fabulous. And so I lived just across the road from the Aubrey, which was one of the few places that used to have a Sunday afternoon, early evening drag show. Yes. With Carlotta, I think, was there. But um, it was amazing. You know, such a different time, such a different time. But fun it is, and vi fun. I think it's a medical centre or something It now. is, it's hideous. Or x-rays. It's, it's, it's it medical x-ray. It was imaging, a hoot yeah. and... and the frocks weren't as glam as a lot of them are now, but it was just, it was a special occasion. And of course, the politics of the time meant, because we lived in such a time of secrecy there with, with the whole LGBTQI community. So yes. this gathering of just celebration was fantastic. So I was a little baby and I loved it. How wonderful. And then, of course, I was on Beauty and the Beast for many years with Carlotta. With, with Carol, with fabulous Carlotta, yeah. who I know listens. So hello, Carol. Hello, Carol. And um, yes, well, and... Was was that fabulous to work with an icon like Carlotta? Yeah, there were a lot of icons on that show and also... And Jeannie. Yeah, beautiful Jeannie. Jeannie, Jeannie Little, um, I think, was the first person I ever clocked in my mind of, you are the most creative person I have ever met. Wow. Every cell of her was creativity and... Thinking outside the square. It was, it's really a unique and extraordinary person, as is Carlotta. Um, it was interesting for me because Carlotta would talk um, sometimes when I'd read her book uh, about what a challenge it was for her um, transitioning and what an incredibly difficult thing for yeah. her to go through. Especially at the time she did it. Yeah. It was outrageous. Yeah. You know? um, and then, of course, the, the show about... Carlotta, you know, the was it a little mini series? Yeah, the I mini think? series, yes. I think anything that celebrates perseverance and individuality, it's here, here. I so love them all. Yeah, fabulous. And did you think that when you when you first saw your your first drag show and, and your first drag performers, did you feel that it changed your perspective on on how you looked at the world, seeing what they did? It was funny because I lived in this area and it was... Because you've always lived around yeah, the well, Darling Hurst and now, you know. Yeah. So, um, well, I grew up in the North Shore, so that's why I had to come here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but um, it, it was pre-AIDS, but there was a secrecy with male homosexuality and it was a time at that age where I was very conscious of... Uh, earrings in ears that signified things and scarves in certain pockets signified yeah, things. Absolutely. and. And then AIDS came along, terrible situation. And so there were various stages. As a comedian watching drag, the thing that I totally love 
is it is so politically incorrect mm. and it's the last bastion of that. Yes. The worse you are, the better you are. Yeah. And everybody <laughs> knows it's a joke. Yes. And there's nowhere else that you can do that. Have you ever done drag yourself and do you have a drag name? I have a drag name, but I haven't done drag myself. Right. My drag name, which is actually a character that I've done on stage, is Mona Loud. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> yeah. And I do. And you do. Um, yeah. And have I ever done... I mean, I've shied away personally from all the makeup, all the costumes. And I've got, male drag to me is a, a fabulous art form. All yes. the girls who do that are just... With, as boys are just hot, hot, hot. But for me, what you go through is what I shy away from. <laughs> you know, because I've had so much television makeup in my life. I just... No, I want nothing on. I don't want this fuss. But you love it, do you? I do. I mean, I think I enjoy putting, I enjoy putting a face on. I feel better. I feel more energised. And I, I always, I, I don't know, I think it's just all the things I think I was told I couldn't wear when I was a child because, you know, my mother was so terrified of me becoming gay. Yeah, lucky um, that didn't happen. Lucky that didn't happen. <laughs> um, that... I think I've always wanted to wear this stuff and then because I didn't have, uh, because I was always told I couldn't, it meant that I um, I think I've loved it even more. But tell me, do you feel more beautiful as a man dressed as a man or as a woman? Like, do you feel something's missing when you're think, not in drag? I, I don't think I'm as pretty when I'm a boy. <laughs> so you think you're... I think I look better, yes. Right. Which is probably why I do it as well. Well, you, I think you look gorgeous both. Well, thank you, darling, and that's yeah. why I love you. Uh, so, you have not watched a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race in the past, but you have watched the Aussie season. And yes. how how is your experience so far with the show? Well, first of all, I'm, I really adore Ru. Yes. I, I think RuPaul has achieved extraordinary things. Yeah. And, in fact, in RuPaul's Masterclass, there was a little grab from it. I haven't seen the whole class, but I've, I'm downloading it to watch. And it, it was a wonderfully inspiring piece, which is when you get up on stage to be this person, I'm completely paraphrasing, it is you. Yes. You don't need you don't need permission. You can be that person at any point. Yeah. It's a little bit like when we put something on and I'm here. Well, why are we not here? All, All the, time. the time. And and I love that, that it's not just a persona for that moment, and this is drag or otherwise, but the ultimate person of who you are can exist at any point in time. I the love The person that too. you want to be. Yeah. Yes. So the Australian one, well, I know a few of the girls. Yes. Um, who, of course, I'm barracking for, and I, I've been fascinated to watch it, and this episode in particular has been intriguing to me. Great. Well, let's go into our recap of RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under, episode three. So, let's talk about episode three. Mm. Now, I loved this episode. I have to say, I've this has been my favourite episode so far. Oh, do tell. Why? I think just because it had a really good energy to it. I felt that it having so many sort of performance moments... Uh, I always like the girl group challenge on Drag Race. It's always a fun challenge. And I thought that they were all fantastic. And I just I just had a really good time. I just thought it was a really, it had a bit of everything. I enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. It's interesting to, uh, because, am I allowed to speak? Yes. It's hard to know because there's you, <laughs> then there's this sleep, and then there's that one. And they all need to have a bit of a say. But um, it, it's interesting to me because... In some of the minor challenges, I feel a little bit disappointed sometimes. Yes. Because I know some of the girls, and I've been to many drag shows, and I know how much talent is in there. Yes. And I feel, I hope this is not the wrong thing to say, but I just feel, come on, we're capable of asking more of these girls. Yes. The costumes are invariably, I won't say always, impeccable. Yes. And I adore the dresses. I adore the effort that goes into that. What yes. an art form. Absolutely. But I agree. In this one, we could see with, with our performance, I thought, this is clever. And also, getting the lyrics together, so witty, performing yeah. together, working as a team and seeing... All of that. Seeing some people who couldn't, who had to overcome 
disadvantages, like yes. lack of timing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> To Brilliant. actually do it. And I think that was good. But what was interesting was that the episode started and after we had, you know, that sort of reaction from Art Simone last week and her, you know, uh, sort of outburst, really. Yeah. And I, I have seen a very funny um, meme this week oh, where, no. they've, where they've used Jamae's when Jemay has her tanty and says, I'm leaving, and they've overdubbed Art with Jemay, and it's hysterical. Is Art okay now? Because I think Art's fine. Good. I interviewed her last week, and she was, I think, more zen about it, obviously. But yep. she's had time. But let's talk about the fact that on the mirror, she wrote, Karen, bring home the crown. Now, that's a way to start an episode, because that was very... Controversial. Yes. What do you think was the motivation? And of course, there was the other note as well. Well, she'd used from. Uh, uh, is it? What's the? It's what a Hitchcock movie. No, it, Watch it's out. Um, it's it's Redrum. Um, it's murder, and it's from. Uh, it's uh, Jack Nicholson. Oh, The Shining. It's from The Shining. Mm. What was that then? I don't know. It um, seems. Okay, so yeah. Watch Out. That was there. Was that art as that well? That was art, wrote that on the mirror. And so to go out with that rather than saying, you know, I hope you all have a great competition, she literally went, Karen, you better win. Well, I quite like that. <laughs> <laughs> would you do that if you were well, on the you show? you know Reddle? me. I would never. I'm, I'm reluctant to hold a paddle that gives two <laughs> options judging people on a, on a runway. I hate that. I've been performing so long, you know, and I think, oh, they're trying and they're nervous. Yes, yes. Um, forgive, forgive, forgive too much. As we know from all my relationships, I forgive too much. We can talk about that mm. after the show. But I felt, I think reflecting the nerves and the passion that is required to participate in this yes. is not a bad thing. Okay. Well, we... we definitely saw that art was very revered by the girls. Yes. And I think had been put on this pedestal, so it was interesting that she was toppled off it so quickly. Yeah. It would have really scared them, I think. Yeah, it did seem to shake everybody. But why was art so high up? Because I know art has a big social media following. And is I, it based on honestly, that? Honestly, I to be honest, look, art is a working Melbourne drag queen, like a lot of working Melbourne drag queens who are fabulous. And, yes, she does wonderful makeup and she is, you know, in yep. incredibly clever. But I don't understand why they were all I, I think it, it was about the um social media following. Yeah, and isn't that interesting mm. because there there were a few comments during this episode about what makes a great drag queen. Yes. And and it wasn't just costumes and performance, it was about And it's heart. not just an inst Instagram photo, it's not yeah. just an Instagram post. Yeah. Um, so we see our first guests today, uh, we see that the, the guests are going to be Leland and Troy Savan. Yes. Uh, which, of course, is fabulous. I'm so glad uh, that we had Troy Savan because I'm, oh. I'm a little bit obsessed with Troy Savan. But Troy's language was disgusting. <laughs> what was he even talking about? I couldn't believe it. Oh, well, he was, but he was fabulous and it was great to have him as part of the show. Giving a tip, how to write a song and you get two tips. Yeah. Have, what was it, have personality? Have what, personality and have personality, yeah. I think it was, wasn't that the tip? <laughs> I can't even remember them, I only saw it an hour ago. Um, it's so ridiculous. So we went into, and this is where, you, obviously, Gretel, we went into quick drag and we did a surf rescue. It was supposed to be sort of a Bondi rescue Well, it was challenge. Babe Watch. It was Babe Watch and they all had their red swimmers. Yeah. Uh, which I wonder whether they supplied them for them or whether they had to do that themselves. We had a lot of muff. We had a lot of muff. There was a lot of people who thought a wig down your front of your thing was very funny. But I think... Yes. If... if if I was getting ready in a workroom and I saw somebody else doing that same gag, I'd pull my wig out. I'd Definitely. be like, no. Yeah. Well, one, once it's done, once it's done. And as a woman, I'm, of course, horrified. I see no humour <laughs> in it whatsoever. I felt sorry for the people who had that. But, you see, that challenge is so weird to me because I'd, it doesn't show skill. 
No, no. It, it's kind of like the acting challenge. Show me anger, show me fear, show me... Yes. Yeah, I get it. But all our girls are capable of so much more. Yes, and I feel that running in slow motion, it does get old after, you know, I mean, what we had, everybody sort of doing it. I, I, I thought I thought Maxie was clever doing the hot foot on the sand, like carrying her shoes and running like she's, like that I thought was clever. That was a nice <laughs> twist on it. Um, um, Maxie is a very clever drag. Very clever yeah. drag queen. And I think that, um, you know, she did, it, 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 she finally got a bit more airtime this week where we got to see actually more of what Maxie's capable of. Because yeah. last week I felt like, um, she hadn't been given a good edit. And I wanted to talk to you about this because obviously you have hosted something like Big Brother. Well, you hosted Big Brother. Well, but I'd say something like... <laughs> In other words, my, yes. my brain was going ahead of my mouth. But <laughs> I, you hosted Big Brother, yeah. which of course is a reality television show, but very different to Drag Race. Do you think the producers can alter people's personality through the edit and do they try and do that in your experience? Have you ever... Well, one, so in the days when I did it, which is still fresh in a lot of our minds, but it was, in fact, 20 years ago. Yeah, which is terrifying. When your sleeves were only babies. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so it, it was very different then because we did so much live television. Yes. And, and that... Uh, avoids that whole issue. Yes. Because it's who you are right now under tremendous pressure. And we also turned the shows around very, very, very quickly. Yeah, because you were about 24 hours behind, wasn't it? It was yeah. like so you, the you day did it in the day. You, yep. It was edited at night and then... And it'd be on the next day. Yeah, something, something Crazy. like that. Except yeah. for Sundays when you do it completely live. Live. Um, so that's going back a very long way. So so we... Well, I also wasn't in the edit suite. No. You know, so I... that. I was busy doing the catering. No, I wasn't. I was <laughs> hosting the show. Um, nowadays, of course, things can be shot so far in advance. And I, I think that sometimes we underestimate an audience. Yes. We underestimate their passion for characters and their perfectly happy acceptance of going along for the ride. Yes. Everything in life doesn't need to be a highlight reel. You know, it's like, you know, when we're performing on stage... You go funny, you go quiet, you go soft. Our pause is as important as our words. Absolutely. And often in editing, what we do is bang, 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 and we don't allow the variety that yeah. is a human being. So I think for one, trust our audience and trust their relationship with the participants in any kind of show. And the other one is trust their commitment and the fact that they will not necessarily require everything to be tweaked all the time and built up and built up and built up because that creates an insatiable appetite. It can never be satisfied. If it's always bigger and better and bigger and better, it actually doesn't have to be. I've noticed in a lot of trailers for movies and TV series now, they pretty well show you the entire the whole film. Yep. Like you can watch a trailer and think, oh, I got Save that it. one. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly that's it. True. And that's you also true. know, even if it isn't the reflection of the movie, it was the best bits. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes they're, they're few and far between. If the but, trailer's not, you know, only got three good funny jokes in it, it's possible that those are the only three funny jokes That's exactly in the film. it. So in this one, it's interesting, I would imagine, they're trying to show what a character's strengths are. And I do feel with Maxie initially that Maxie's the oldest there. Yes. And that was oldest and outer, you know, not as hip, not as cool, not but but... Now we're starting to see actually there's wisdom in that. Mm. There's experience in that and that mm. has a tremendous value. So I'm Absolutely. hoping that blossoms. I hope so too because I I do love her. And I thought, you know, so we got two winners of the mini challenge, which were Scarlett and Electra, who, you know, look almost identical. Almost identical. Except for Electra's wigs are terrible. That's the way I can yeah, tell why them apart. Are they, why are they consistently not the world's best? I think she just... Well, look, I think we heard a little bit of about that later in the episode. But let's go on to... They go into two teams, which they... Which we they always do. I always love a bit of the last one picked. So we had... Yeah. 
the Outback fake hose led by Scarlett and that was she was joined by etc Anita and Coco and then three and a half men great which title are, was a much funnier I thought um, with <laughs> with Electra leading with Maxie, Karen and Keita Mee. Uh, so those were the two teams. So they've gone into their recording sessions. We saw varying levels of musicality. Yeah, sometimes none at all. Sometimes none. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's Coco's singing is not her strong suit. And yet Coco, I thought, thought she could sing. Well, I think she think yes. But she can dance. She can dance. And it's it's... I always find that so wonderful when, you know, someone who's a, a larger girl is such a great dancer and great performer. Because, of course, on Oxford Street, to work here on this strip, you've got to be a good dancer because production shows make you do it. Like, you cannot be... It's not like America where you can be a drag queen and you can spend your entire number taking dollar bills out of audience members' hands and not that's that your number. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, which is fine too. But we don't do that. We actually have to work for the yeah. money. Yeah. And so I think, uh, you know, we've always seen great performers on stage on Oxford Street. So I knew this was going to be... You know, some of them may have never been in a recording booth before, especially not when you've got Michelle Visage, who I think is so wonderfully supportive, but also an utter cunt. I, um, well, she I, both. She was, I, I loved seeing her in this because yes. when Reese, Michelle are being the judges, I don't get to see them fully blossomed. And here she was nailing it. This yeah. is right. This is wrong. I love that. I did too. And, you know, I say it almost every week on this, but, God, she's good talent. She is such a great talent, Michelle. And I'm so glad that we have Michelle Visage because RuPaul said, I'm bringing that friend of mine along for this show. Yeah, fabulous. I'm taking her with me because she's just, and she has been incredible. So yeah. I loved her in the studio with the girls. Then we saw rehearsals of the Maxi Challenge they were getting it all together. We had two choreographers. Now, we saw quite a bit of et cetera, et cetera, throwing her two cents in. Yeah. She's certainly getting a villain edit, I feel. Um, yes, but I do feel in each episode we're allowed to gleefully abandon whatever our perspective was last episode. Yes. And you could be reinvented this episode. Absolutely. And... Uh, and, but this was interesting because we had some professional dancers and professional dance teachers yes. on this. And then... We... I thought, personally, Scarlett did such a great job of putting that number together for them. I thought they... I Look, they were, she was doing it so well and she really did um, manage, et cetera, very well, I felt, in that situation where, you know, she's got... Strong, I mean, they're all strong personalities, yeah. all eight of them are. Yeah. And I think that is, I don't feel that we've seen a drag race season for a while that is so strong with everyone had a character. We knew who everyone was the second that they started, whereas I often find on the American one that there's about three episodes there where I'm like, oh, hang on, what's who's she and what she do yeah. and who, what's she about? And I, I find that. It has not been the case on the Aussie. But I think it's interesting too because every one that we've got in this first Aussie series is a queen of their territory. There's nobody who's the second best or the third best in the year. Mm. So, as you say, these are, these are alpha drag queens. Alpha drags, yeah. yes. So, we then had a little bit of a moment with... We had a couple of interesting moments in the work group. Firstly, there was a watch-out note written just for some high drama I did actually I I <laughs> I, I, I audibly gasped when uh Keita said it was her oh, and I no. thought that was so funny and then it was like no it wasn't it wasn't me <laughs> it's such a great idea though it's isn't so funny. it but and, and then the super sleuth thing it's a green pen who's got a green, green pen who had the green one Ooh, everybody <laughs> everyone had the green pen but it would be interesting if that was art who actually left it. I wonder if we'll ever know. Maybe I need another exit interview with Art to say, did you write the notes? You know, it, Was it you? It could be more innocent because I think I saw on one of the other episodes that people were going around using someone else's makeup. Oh. So if, 
I think I did, unless I dreamt it. No, 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 it's possible. And so a note near your makeup is clearly, you know, watch out, I, I know that you're near my makeup. Oh. I don't know. Maybe I Coco loved wrote it, it herself, I though I didn't ask her that. Oh, dear. There was, there was a bit of a theory that it was herself to bring her attention. To bring her more attention. <laughs> well, she certainly got it. And then she really kind of went, et cetera, et cetera, for being in a a non-Oxford Street queen. And was, was her, she got the, it was quite mean. I mean, she's, you know, know that was, was very out of character. It is, but I quite loved it, I have to say. I loved it. Did you? Yes. Do you think there's not enough meanness in the show? No, I just think it's, I just enjoy it when they do throw something like that in because it really sets a cat amongst the pigeons. And I quite enjoy that in, in a show like Drag Race to see that and, happen. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting too because, of course, the other side of it that you're alluding to too is that Ordinarily, you become a team in any show, don't you? Yes. Ordinarily, you, your differences all come together and you're a team. The yes. audience is going to love the show because of, of your unity. Yes. So that's interesting, seeing the little barbs and the New Zealand versus Australia. And the Australia. New Zealand versus Australia, which I, I didn't know whether we'd see it as so much of a competition, but the fact that we've already seen now two Australian girls go home, it was, it was interesting. And then we had a little bit of a moment with... Uh, Electra sort of talking about the fact that, you know, she'd had some obviously financial difficulty and she was living in a garage, did she say, yeah, at one she'd point? Yeah, lost her business. Lost her business, which was a dance school. And but a wonderful thing, really wonderful comment, talking about how, how could she inspire her students to believe in mm. themselves when she herself had gone through a period where she lost faith in herself. Yeah. But I think also it showed a wonderful side of Maxie and also Karen from finance yeah. that they were so gentle mm. and saying, I think it was Karen saying, I really yep. want her to win. Yeah. She deserves to, this, this app, not the whole thing. But. Absolutely. But I, I love that, uh, I mean, obviously I know both Maxie and Karen personally and they are such wonderful people. I'm glad that that has been able to be shown Agreed. on the show. Yeah. And I, that really does, um, I think it really does build them into it. They, they got a bit more this, this week Agreed. to see other sides of them. Yeah. and Because they yeah. are sweethearts and, and they're so supportive. Can I just say on that, and we might be too far away from it, but also one of the things that we discovered when the shows were being performed, when the, the pieces were being performed, was how people who had things that would not be fortes, like a lack of rhythm, yep. um, or couldn't necessarily dance uh, or sing, stepped up. Yes. And the, the, the control required to do that under such intimidating circumstances. Absolutely. I, I really think that was admirable to show us the fear mm -hmm. and then show us the success. I love, too, the fact that both those performances, and I thought the song was catchy. I did too. I really, I'm like, down. oh, good. I'm glad that's going to be downloadable. I'm going, yeah. to, I'm going to download that because yeah. it's fun. And, um, you know, I thought the two teams were both so strong that I felt the judges were clutching at straws this yes, week yes. watching that because I loved, look, some of the verses weren't as hilarious as others, but... They were such great performers, all of them, and they'd really, you know, they'd given Maxie some great gags. They'd given, you know, they'd given the girls who could dance really great moments. Yes. But everybody looked really cohesive and really fabulous. I agree. And how did they remember their lyrics under those circumstances? So fast and then... And then perform it. And doing the choreo. Like, I, there's no way in the world I would have been... I would have been fluffing that all over the place. Really, I just thought it was fabulous. And I did notice, and I'm just talking about Maxie one more time, but only because of her journey. Yep. She nailed the rhythm. Oh, and it yeah. was Maxie who and didn't have any. That was the funny thing that they sort of show that, and then, of course, she gets up and she's fabulous. So I think yeah. it was... Minimal. A, it, yeah. But fabulous. But it was great. And I loved, I loved the song. I loved both of the performances. And I thought this was the week we were we were looking for because, yes. you know, the first week we didn't really get to see any talent except in the lip sync. Second week, obviously, the Snatch Game was very sort of, you know, Bit up and hard. down. Yeah. And, do you know, I've had a chat to a few people who were there and 
we had spoken last week on the podcast about the fact that, you know, Maxie didn't do the I said pet, I said love, I said pet yes. stuff. And we all thought that was just outrageous. And apparently Maxie did do all of that. And it was And cut. it has been cut. Why? So who knows? The but plot they thickens. It does. But I think they've cut it to make it worse than it probably was. Oh, that's interesting. Isn't but that why would anyone do that? I don't know. Maybe because they wanted that thing to be the worst stage game ever so as people watched it. I don't know. Oh, that was interesting because that felt like a schmozzle to me. Yeah. And also I, it was like give us your best shtick. I, I, and according to, use that to phrase some it. of the girls, it was much better in the room and so that when we saw them all afterwards and they were saying, oh, that was really good, we all were great. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we were all like, no, you weren't. Uh, <laughs> The, but when right. they were like, we were, we were all great. But then apparently there was so much stuff that was cut out. The Queen got edited quite a lot too. And even though she won, uh, Anita was was whistled down to, from what she actually did. Yeah. There was quite a lot of stuff that they have, they have certainly made why. people look better and worse. Uh, mm. That's interesting. Mm. Oh, well, when you're editing comedy too... And editing is an interesting thing because some people edit by sight yep. and some edit by sound. Yep. And so some will chop it together because you're looking there and you're looking there and that all makes sense. Yes. Others will take the grab for time and miss the punchline completely. Absolutely. So maybe, who knows why the best lines um, weren't used, but it certainly made this week's episode look great. It made this week's <laughs> episode fabulous and they were yeah. great on, the, on that. Drag hat, drag hat. So it's now time to play Hideous or Heaven, Gretel. I know. I, I find this game hideous. <laughs> I do. I do not like to judge. All right, no, well, we're gonna, we've got our paddles this week and we're going to say it's Hideous or Heaven. The, this is Bogan Prom Realness is the yes. Uh, category. Yes. Uh, so which, of course, look, yes. I do take slight... Umbridge? Umbridge with, with the idea that... We're promoting Australians as being bogans. Do you think we are? I well, I mean, I know that sometimes we are, but I I felt I don't know. This you was you my, think it was a bit cliché? I just felt yeah. Can we do something a bit more fun? Like what? I don't know. Just anything else. I ideas. Prefer, it's you all know, about ideas. You know, let's do Kylie's fashion and do something fabulous. You know, when everyone yes. does a tribute to Kylie Minogue, I would prefer to see that. But then this, I felt like we've had some. Tough categories so far because we've had the nude, we've had the, yes. uh, we've had, I like the hometown. And then yes. last week we had the sea, under the sea sort of Yes, that thing. was a little bit hard to grasp. I uh, know. And, and then again this week, look, this is easier and this is funnier. And that's what I did enjoy. First up on the runway, we had et cetera, et cetera, yeah. who wore that sort of pink velour jumpsuit. I have to say, I actually... I thought this was hideous. I'm going with that. What are we? What are our judging criteria here, though? Like, what are we judging on? Cosy or attitude? I just or... didn't think. Well, I just thought the whole thing. I didn't like. I didn't. I thought that I. I was surprised she was safe. To be perfectly honest. All right. I know. I don't think if we just get down to knit and grit, I yep. don't think a pink tracksuit is bogan. No. Um, but she was being Paris Hilton if she were a bogan, which is layer upon layer and very meta. Yes, very um, meta. <laughs> uh, so I'd, I'd just give a sideways paddle. That means okie doke. It was okay, okay. but not, not, not fabulous. Not fabulous. All right. Next up on the runway, we had Coco Jumbo. She was wearing this sort of purple... Uh, 80s, a bit, you know, not dissimilar I, I to I know. This, actually, I didn't Gretel. want to mention it, but she was dressed as a bogan and you're dressed as a queen <laughs> and yet you're in the same outfit. I'm not in the same outfit. But it's similar. Um, yes. Well, you're in the sister outfit. I, I liked I liked this dress. I thought it was I thought it was a good frock. I liked the concept. I think it could have gone further. Yes. I think, you know, at the bush, I think there could have been a bit more branches, a bit, a bit more, you know... She's really rolled in the hay. Yes, I think that's the really interesting thing about these small challenges. Yes. It's how complex and how many little jokes you can put inside it. Absolutely. And on this one, not too many. Once again, sideways paddle. Okay, I'm on heaven on this. I did like this look on did Coco. You? I did. All right, I thought I'm going to was... go heaven as well. Okay, well, great. Next up on the runway, we had Anita Wiglet. She's always entertaining. Yes. Always entertaining. Look. 
not my favourite on like the sort of denim skirt that gone wrong. I felt I don't know. It didn't go enough sort of towards a cath day night sort of double denim or a you know that to me I didn't. I think it was good. I think it was fine. <laughs> I think our New Zealanders are at a slight disadvantage. Because they, don't know what a bogan they is. may not know <laughs> what the Australian interpretation of a bogan is. Yes. Because it definitely is not what Anita was wearing. No. And Rue also said, RuPaul said, I want that outfit. I looked at it and thought, I want that outfit too. Oh, really? Yeah, I was oh. so slender and so fabulous. But it wasn't bogan. It wasn't bogan. So it's not hideous, but it's. No, I'm with you. It's I'm, a downward. I'm, it, it's, it's not quite heaven. Yeah. Next up, we had Scarlett Adams. I mean, if you're from Perth and you don't know what a bogan is, you've got a problem. Let's yeah. let's be honest. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. This was I'm obviously heaven yeah. times ten. This was iconic. This is going to go down as one of those outfits that we remember from this series. But isn't that, and I'm going heaven also. Isn't that what we want? That it was exactly what we wanted. What what? Are we talking, how does this costume reflect such a simple concept? It's a goon bag. It's a goon bag. And to and have the matching handbag. That had wine in, that was a goon bag, <laughs> that she had wine in and drank it and the the sort of overdone mullet and the cigarette necklace, it was it was total perfection. Yeah, and, and she deserved this win tonight. Yeah, it she was deserved very, it. was um, very Catherine Martin kind of design, don't you think? It was. Very, very clever. Very. But also, isn't it wonderful, the more you look into some of our, our beautiful dresses, the more stories, we, the subtleties, the tips and the clues, I love that. Yes, yeah. and I love that. I love this as an iconically Australian thing, to just have that come down the runway. I just... That was what we wanted from this series. We wanted a goon bag yeah, walking down clever. the RuPaul's Drag Race runway. Yeah. Perfection. Electra Shock came down the runway in a sort of gold 80s uh, look uh, with black lips. Again, her makeup's just not quite there for me. Mm. But again, I didn't feel it said bogan ball. No, it, it felt messy. Um, a little bit like you were cobbling things together. Yes. Rather than I get the essence of this. And that's really what it's about, isn't it? It's the essence. The essence How do I of reflect it. that? And I found it a little confusing. Yeah. It's a sideways. But I'm a hideous, me, hideous from me. I didn't like this one. And I didn't think it was enough. I didn't think it was bad enough that it was fabulously bad. It wasn't good enough to be. It, it just, it was a mess. It but was a mess. This... Keita Bean came out in the sort of fluorescent yellow uh, 50s. Well, Cindy lauper -esque. It was a bit Cindy Lauper meets. Madonna. Meets, yeah, 80s, yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it was that sort of look again. I don't know why the 80s has become this, uh, the signature for Bogan, considering I'm wearing it right now. Yeah. Uh, but I thought that this one again... I didn't feel it told enough of a story for me. And yet, another New Zealander. Another New Zealander, yes. I mean, it'll be interesting because it is Australia and New Zealand and we haven't had any particularly New Zealand mm, challenges yet. No. Um, but I do think all three of our New Zealanders, I think it's three, yes. uh, have been behind the eight ball on this one. Yep. Whether it's because of that, but none of them have nailed it. No. Maxi, Maxine Maureen Shield comes out next with the world's biggest bum bag. And I thought that <laughs> yeah. that again really nailed the Bogan brief, having a nice, enormous bum bag, that sort of Grandma Yetta sweater and the hair with I've just done a couple of little streaks in it to make as I'm the life of the party. I thought this was a good one. It's really nice too because it's not done by someone who is... It's, there is a grasp of a notion and a tremendous confidence. Yes. This is who my character is and I look magnificent. Yes. That's all part of it, isn't it? I don't look like a dickhead. I, oh, look, I look amazing. Fabulous. Yeah. Yes. And, and we need that too. Absolutely. That, that cockiness that, that does not marry the circumstance. I think she nailed it. I'm a, I'm a heaven for Maxine. Heaven? Heaven, Maxie. The final runway today was Karen from Fine Ads. I, look, I quite love this. Again, taking us to the 80s. 
I love the ruffles down the side. I mean, it's hideous. It's absolutely hideous. But I think it sort of was the right hideous. Once again, what a costume. Or everything joined together. That's yes. really important aesthetically, isn't it? That yep. everything is part of the same story, not yes. eclectic. Nailed it. Nailed it. So not I think I'm going to give her not only hideous, because it was absolutely hideous, but heaven as well. Oh, that's sneaky. Well, I'll go with the sideways, but the upside down. <laughs> I'm the right way up. <laughs> heaven. But I, but I must <laughs> say, Maxie and Karen had similar looks in this. Yes, and I think that they interpreted that the same way. I mean, look, the goon bag is so far ahead of everybody else, but because it just was quick, it was so such a clever take on it. But I think that everyone still had, you know, good runways tonight. So we're down to the end of the episode now, Gretel. Uh, we've got the, the tops and bottoms. We have safe Karen and et cetera, don't know whether I necessarily agree with it, Cetera being safe, but she was, they were safe. We had tops and bottoms, but I felt that they were having a lot of trouble critiquing things. They were really finding just, oh, you faltered a bit in I that performance. That I thought it, it was clutching at straws for me. I, I felt that. Do you think it was because they were all on par or they were trying to be nice? They were just kind of insignificant things. You faltered there, but then you recovered. Mm. Well, the recovery is the important bit. Yes. Yeah, just... Yes. I I did feel that it was it was a harder harder challenge to judge because they were so strong. Agreed. I think everybody was strong in that, and that their personalities really came through. Um, but we had the final two. The final two were Electra and Coco. Electra did a lot of splits, did a lot of tricks again. Of course, this is her second time lip syncing. Coco did it brilliantly. I thought the choice of song this week was so much stronger. Yeah. I didn't I didn't mind the Bee Gees in, in episode one, but last week I thought it just wasn't a finale. And this really gave a drag classic from, of course, the brilliant movie Priscilla Queen of the Desert. They've used a Shake Your Groove thing. And yep. Shake Your Groove thing is such a drag staple. Yes. You know? Brilliant. I think it's interesting with Electra because and and this is testament to how much do you hold back? Because you never know when you're going to be removed from the show. Yes. But Electra came out with her first dance off in yep. episode one or two with the splits, with everything. She showed us it feels mm. or what she's got. Yeah. So it's hard for her to surprise us now. And then also having done the performance tonight, because again, she'd made that performance about splits and tricks as yes. well that then to do it again for the lip sync, I was surprised by Rue's decision, I have to say. Mm -hmm. I kind of felt, well, I do feel that we will lose something by not having any uh, diverse yep. queens, you know, in the show, because now we've, we've lost Jojo and we've lost Coco. Yep. And I felt that both of them brought so much and brought, you know, a point of difference and were fabulous. So to lose Coco at this point I think is sad and I, I kind of, I didn't, I thought Coco's lip sync was fantastic. That I was agree. the thing. I, I, don't, I don't think there was a winner and for me, to put it all out there, I feel that Scarlet, uh, that Electra should have gone home this week. I felt that we've seen it because that was it. You still got bad wigs, doll. It's interesting that's cruel but mm. true. Um, mm. I, I feel that maybe we didn't get the ep where we could really get to know Coco. I would and, have liked a bit more. Yeah, I, I, I feel like there's a challenge or, or there's one of these mini tasks that, that can highlight qualities in all different people and we yes. didn't get the chance to see hers. I agree with the diversity. I mean, and, and not for tokenism. because no. Because our girls, all of our girls have been fantastic, but... I just think there was more to unwrap with Coco and we I, didn't get the chance. I would have liked to have seen more. And and I think that was disappointing. I think people are going to, we'll see the reaction this week online. I think it is going to be a a, a bad reaction to Coco going. I, I seriously feel like we've seen what Electra can do now. And, and I don't, I didn't need to see more. After tonight's two performances from her, I went, ah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And and you see this is one of the interesting things with performing, with connecting with an audience. Mm. It's 
it's what is inside, just as our boys told us. You know, yes. It is your character, it is your personality. How is that revealed? And within these challenges and these tremendous pressures of working in a team, working under such time constraints, that's when your character can blossom and we want to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Not just on the stage, absolutely. but everywhere. Well, thank you, Gretel Colleen, for your wisdom. Oh, I can't today. help it. It's been fantastic <laughs> for your barbed comments about my I'm sorry. shoulders. Uh, it has been a joy to have you. Thank you for joining us on Drag Hang. Thank you for having me and I'm not really sorry about your sleeves. <laughs> I'm just glad there are no open flames here. <laughs> Here we are on Drag Hack with our eliminated queen. So sad to see you go, so Coco bitch. Jumbo. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> it is so fabulous to have you here, darling. I'm, I'm excited. Thanks for having Great me. Great to have you in studio in our in our home of drag and at the Oxford Ginger's Nightclub. Yes, um, darling. How was the whole experience? Did you have a good time? It was. It was, it was wild. It was like an absolute whirlwind. But like, like, I had so much fun doing it. I had so much fun with the girls. And, yeah, I just loved every single second and minute of it. And, and I'm loving it even more now that the, that the episodes are coming out, finally. Yeah. <laughs> and what's been the reaction from people? What, like, have you had positive responses? All and... positive so far. Um, uh, After they've seen this week, maybe they'll uh, go you for being so shady. But yeah, I'll have, oh, yeah, I haven't seen the episode yet, so I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what? I uh, there's some things that you say because you actually read etc. Quite um, quite harshly. harshly yes. <laughs> do you think that uh, like I mean, do you have do you work with her? Have you ever worked with her before? Um, I don't work with her, but she does book me to perform at the um, Imperial Hotel, so I might not be seeing me there anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you very much. Uh, I think you said something along the lines of you, um, uh, you know, she's out there at that other place and doesn't really get to work on Oxford Street. And it was very sort of like, we're better, we're better. So it was Cam. I loved it. Where's the lie? <laughs> <laughs> I did giggle. I did giggle. How did you find the singing challenge? Because obviously oh, this week gosh. it was tough. It was tough. Um, and very awkward as well. Like, um, like getting the news and then going straight into it all. Um, and then like, Recording in front of um, Michelle Visage and just, like just having her like sit there, listen, judge, and just give her like little tips and stuff was so nerve wracking. I'm sure. And, like, I, I even know that I get um, I get nervous like on a microphone. Yes. So like singing is just like not where it's at for me. But like I can sing like a, like a little bit like here and there. Like, I'm amazing in the shower. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah, um, absolutely had a turn for the worst and it is what it is. I, I think that the hard thing I found this week watching the episode was that they were so strong. Everybody who was there, those eight were just, everyone was fantastic. Yeah. And so I actually sat there and went, they're really clutching at straws 100%. to find something wrong because watching the performance of Queens Down Under that you girls did was incredible and you were fabulous in it and you come across so well and... I I watched it and went, I can't, I don't know who you mm. would send. Yeah. And then not only that, you've done now two lip syncs for your life in two episodes. Yeah. Your lip sync was so fabulous. And I mean, really, between the two of you, there was, it, it was such a strong competition. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. I just wish, like, like if I could do it again, I would learn how to do the splits before I go in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you think that that is something on Drag Race that has become too much of a thing to be able to do a death drop or the split? One hundred percent, yeah. And like, um, like in Sydney, like we always joke about like the death dropping girls and like, oh, it's like that's such a Drag Race thing. But like now we're on Drag Race and like Drag Race has come to Australia, so it's I guess best to keep up with the times. <laughs> I mean, it is funny, but I, for me, because I've seen obviously you work from when you were in competitions yes. and I judged you at a bloody comp a thousand years yes. ago to now where you're the star of Oxford Street. It has been such a great career that you've had. Are you loving this new part of it now that you've gotten to be on an international television show? Yeah, it's absolutely, like, it's crazy. Um, like when I was like starting, I never thought that I'd like be doing production shows at ARC or like here, like, or like, 
I would never thought that I would be at the level that I am now. And to then, like, coming out of COVID, like, one of, like, the darkest years of my entire life since high school. Um, and then being asked to go on to Drag Race was just such a, like, what? Really? It's, like, it's insane. It's, yeah. like, that, like, that next level. And, yeah, I'm just glad that I got to be a part of it. What was your favourite moment of the series for you before, uh, as part of the show? Um, I'd have to say kicking out Simone off. <laughs> have have you had Art Simone fans hate on you for this? No, I guess surprisingly, I've only had like two, um, like two hate mail, like hate mail messages. Uh, so I'm wow. doing pretty good. But yeah, they're all like art supporters. But like, yeah, it was either her or me. Let's talk about the message she left on the mirror. Oh yeah. How did you girls feel? Because I mean, we could see the shock that she had written, Karen. You better bring home the crown. Yeah. How did that make all of you feel about art and, and the way that she left? Uh, well, like, after seeing the, um, like, the second episode and, like, her look, that means nothing. Oh, oh, oh good Lord. Like, that just, like, showed, like, everything that I needed to see. Um, because, like, she is just very, like, on all the time in, like, the confessionals and, like, when the cameras are on. So then, like, to have that raw moment of her, like being absolutely, like, honest to self and letting that show was just, like, insane. It really showed, like, how much she wanted it, how much she... Expected it, I think. I think she... I think there was a sense of entitlement there and it's it's interesting that, um, you know, the reaction from the other queens in the competition too, that there was just sort of this sense of... of uh, shock that she went so quickly, yeah. but I mean, the reality is in this in this show, especially, anyone can go home at any time. And I mean, you were such a you were such a strong competitor, and even though you ended up in the bottom, I think they were really you know trying. Uh, I, I still feel like you came across as one of the most entertaining, oh. and and certainly you had the shadiest moments. <laughs> I, I really, this is where I'm just so, it's so funny because, like, you know, obviously we know each other, but yeah. seeing you in those situations and just the things you were saying in confessionals and then I did have to laugh when Maxie went and said chookers to Electra before the thing and then not to you and you're like... <laughs> but also I'm curious to know like if the Americans and people watching it go, oh, oh, she really is, she's so nasty. And it's like, no, but like you don't realise Maxie and Coco are best friends. So it's yeah, like, exactly. you know, it's 100%. just kind of cat. It was just so funny. <laughs> I loved all of those moments in the show and I felt like um, – you brought so much to the competition, so congratulations yeah, on that. I, I loved it, and like, like I, I thought that like I, when we were in the workroom, I like turned to the girls. And I was like, "Hey, girls, like you all know I love you, right?" And like, yeah, I'm like, so I'm just gonna talk so much like as much shit as I can about you in the <laughs> interviews. So like. Okay, you do you, boo. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but I did love that. And that was what's so fun because you, uh, we're going to miss you, I think, for the rest of the, com uh, for the, rest of the competition. Yeah. Because, you know, it's but get boring now. <laughs> the great thing is that we can still see you performing. Where are you performing at the moment? I'm performing here in Gingers um, every Saturday night from what's well, supposed to be 8.30, but we never go on until 9.30. <laughs> <laughs> drag time. Yeah, drag absolutely. Time. Um, and at Poof Toof at the Ivy. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. And are you still doing the brunches there as well as the um, night or just the, the night? The brunches have stopped for um, because of for winter. winter. Yes. yes. It's too cold. It's too cold to get in the Although pool. Although it's perfect um, bikini weather for me so I don't sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, now, I have a few quick fire questions oh, for okay. you, darling. All right. Wine or beer? Wine. Crocs or flip-flops? Flip-flops. <laughs> what types of posts get you the most likes on your socials? Um, um, like the primary ones, like where I'm performing at. Yes. Great. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your favourite lip-sync number? Ooh, my favourite lip-sync number would have to be... Um, oh, gosh, what am I loving at the moment? Uh, I'm loving um, The Boss by Diana Ross. Diana Ross, oh, a classic, yeah. a classic. What's the greatest compliment you've ever received? Um, 
Oh, it would have to be like RuPaul telling me like I'm um, like beautiful and stunning. That was pretty amazing, oh, wow. wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I also did love Maxie brings up in the uh, in Untucked that she and they say, oh, you know, blah blah blah, and then Maxie just goes, well, RuPaul said I was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven, <laughs> um, who is your fashion icon? Uh, my fashion icon would have to be uh, a little bit of Lizzo. Lizzo, she's amazing. Yeah, she's stunning. Big girl, big black girl. And yeah, she's like everything that she wears is always great. How did you feel after Snatch Game and being Lizzo? <laughs> <laughs> um Great. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that was so awkward because, like, getting up on stage or getting onto the panel and then looking around and seeing everybody um, and, like, not choosing not to do an actual character, like, personality-wise. And, like, I think I'm very much like Lizzo. But then getting up in there, like, up onto the panel, I just got, like, nervous and I was like, oh, shit, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> very nerve-wracking. Uh, do you regret choosing her as the character? I... Uh, yeah, I think so. I, if, Did I, you have a backup? Um, well, my backup was going to be Kathy Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> because I had like the green and white suit, but like, I, got, um, I got nervous because like I'm not Aboriginal. And so I thought like I might offend people, but I just thought it would be so funny to have like a fat Kathy Freeman in the suit <laughs> with like little rips in the seams, like bits of fat coming You've out. You've let yourself go yes. since you ran, Kathy. Since I got the gold medal, girl. <laughs> um, what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Um, make coffee. Make coffee. What is the wildest thing you've done in drag? How wild. Oh, oh, it's up to you. I've got a glass of champagne. Oh, I'm ready to go. God, um, I think the wildest thing I have done in drag, it's probably like one of those um, mechanical bucking balls. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was fun. Cam. <laughs> um, what was your first concert? My first, Cher, just recently. Oh, really? Was yeah. that the first thing you saw at oh, the... Yeah. Oh, my I, I God. Was at, it was in Newcastle, though. Um, I... Like, I was saving myself for Beyonce, and then, yeah. like, when, the, like, the tickets to Cher came out, I was like, I have to. She was fabulous, wasn't she? It would be homophobic she? if I didn't. Oh my gosh, what? It would be homophobic. Okay, Neighbours or Home and Away? Neighbours. And what brings you joy? What brings me joy? Um, food. <laughs> I understand. Amen. Oh, uh, darling. Well, cheers. Congratulations. No, it has just you. been a joy watching you on the show. And we cannot wait to see more Coco Jumbo all around Australia and hopefully the world as soon as we're allowed to leave yes, this country. So. Um, but we are so thrilled to have had you here on Drag Hag Coco Jumbo. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week on Drag Hag. We will be up every Saturday at 5 p.m. on all good streaming platforms as well as on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Drag Hag.